part two in uh, my molecules talk. Um, and now I'm getting into fats. Um, and I didn't mention this uh, in when I was talking about carbohydrates, but I'm going to mention this here. Polarity still matters here. So how do you tell fats different from other molecules? So like carbohydrates, they're still carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but they have a lot of carbon, they have a lot of hydrogen, but the oxygen portion of them is turned way down. And so that's kind of the tell, okay? Now it's important to remember that when you're dealing with fats, um, that if you looked at an, uh, a carbohydrate, they've got a lot of carbon and oxygen bonds um, and OH bonds. So they're gonna be polar and they're gonna have a lot of hydrogen bonding on there. So they can interact with water very well, okay? You've seen this before with oils and some demonstrations before that you know intuitively that fats don't mix with water very well. They're hydrophobic, okay? Um, so that means on some level, they're gonna be less polar, but you're gonna have to figure out how. Okay, so how was a fat made? And I also did this a little bit as a pattern recognition on day one, even though you didn't know where I was going. So let's talk about it. Okay, so the first molecule I've got up here is glycerol. And so it's carbon, 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 bound to three oxygens, single bonded, and then a whole bunch of H. So one, two, three carbon, one, two, three oxygens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So C3, H8, O3, okay? And if you're doing the ball and stick model, this is how it looks in 3D. Again, it's really hard to represent things in 2D that would be in 3D, and you're like, well, that's kind of crooked. Yeah, because things in 3D are gonna try to get as much space from each other. Everything here looks like it's 90 degrees, but here it's actually got a little bit more space from each other. You'll, when you take chemistry for longer, you'll figure it out. Not important for here. Okay, well, that's glycerol. Well, these are fatty acids, and normally they wouldn't be this short but we don't need to worry about that. What's a fatty acid? Well, it's a long carbon and hydrogen chain. So I did these as four and five carbon hydrogen chains, but at the head, it's got a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen and an OH. Well, there's your acid. Acids are H plus. Ah, okay. Well, there's your acid and there's your tail. Oh, hydrogen bonding and polar. Carbon and hydrogen are pretty even as how they pull on the bond. Oh, this is the fatty part that's nonpolar. You can almost split this molecule in two. Water can interact with this part. Water doesn't interact with this part very well. In fact, it does it with glycerol. Water can interact with this part. It doesn't interact with this part so well. Oh, well, if you're thinking back to how you would put together uh, uh, sugars, we'll remove water. Huh. OH, OH. So we need to lose an H and OH. And you can have fatty acids of different lengths. So I drew this one shorter. So there. And there. And then this one, I threw in a double bond and I just did that to keep things interesting for me. So there and there. And that makes water go bye bye. And just so you can see these, I'm not going to show a whole bunch of them, but here you go. Here's what a fatty acid looks like as a ball and stick model. And I'll hold it up here. You can see it. So the little things are all poking out. And here's what a double bond would look like. Okay. So if you lose three waters, I can just scoop this on down. Well, now you can see it. 
And it looks exactly like what happened with the sugar. You lose water, you lose water, you lose water, and this long carbon chain fits in there. And now you know when you mix oil and water, what part of the oil mixes with the water and what part faces away. Got an idea of what part's mixing with what? You need to have some part that's at least a little bit polar that can actually interact with the water, otherwise nothing's gonna happen. So this is what a fat is. It's the glycerol that's kind of your backbone that's been now bonded to three fatty acids. Okay, so I wanted to show you one other wrinkle that sometimes throws students for a loop. So let me unplug here again and you're gonna see the screen flash, sorry guys. Okay, so there's this class of molecules called steroids that they're in your bottle and we lump them together with the fats. Okay, and so I'm drawing out one. I didn't make a ball and stick model because I'm gonna run out of modeling kits here. This is a hormone called cortisol. It's in your body, okay? It's a stress hormone. Um, and if you look at it, it's classified as a fat. I'm gonna be quiet for a second. And if you think, maybe you can see why. You've got a whole lot of carbon in there. You've got a whole lot of hydrogen bonded to that carbon. Carbon and hydrogen share electrons equally. It's going to be really nonpolar in those places. It's not going to interact with water very well. You've got a couple of spots. where the bond is gonna be a little bit polar in places, where water might be able to interact a little bit, but that's not most of the molecule. I mean, hydrogen bond, hydrogen bond, hydrogen bond, polar, polar, but that's not most of the molecule. So if you had to guess, this thing's not gonna interact with water very well. Only five oxygens of all of that carbon and hydrogen is classified as a fat, okay? So if you see something like this, a lot of carbon, a lot of hydrogen, just a little bit of oxygen, no other elements sprinkled in there, in the rings, you might get confused for a second. Still fat, okay? Two molecules down, two to go.